Hey guys, this is Entity for Deuces Cracked. In an earlier video, I discussed the basic concept of hand ranges. Today's video is going to focus on a slightly more advanced version of the same concept, weighted hand ranges. Weighted hand ranges are a combination of hand ranges and the probability that your opponent can hold a hand in a given situation. We use these in spots where we know some information about our opponent, but don't feel certain about what they could be holding. Weighted hand ranges are necessary when attempting to estimate expected value in these situations. If you've ever found yourself thinking, hmm, he might be able to have aces here, then you've thought in terms of weighted hand ranges, even though you didn't know it at the time. While they can certainly be a tool to be used at the table, one of the best situations to use weighted hand ranges is when studying hands away from the table. This helps to tune our intuition about when calling, raising, or folding is the correct play in a close spot. Here's a very simple illustration of exactly what I mean when I say a combination of probability and an estimation of a hand range. We're playing Limit Hold'em and it's folded to us in the cutoff. There are two somewhat loose players in the blinds. We have pocket fives and we raise. Our opponent on the button calls. For the sake of this example, he's a tight and aggressive player. The flop comes ace of spades, ten of hearts, five of diamonds. The blinds check to us, we bet, and our opponent calls. Both blinds fold. The turn is the seven of clubs. We bet and our opponent raises. We want to know which hands are beating us currently. Using simple hand ranges, we can say that our opponent has three possible combinations of pocket aces, pocket tens, and pocket sevens. Weighted hand ranges are necessary to figure out how realistic it is that our opponent can have a set, however. We know it's very unlikely that a tight aggressive opponent with two players left to act after them on the flop would call with pocket sevens on an ace-10-5 board. Given that, we can say the probability of him having pocket sevens is almost zero. With a 0% chance of three possible combinations of pocket sevens, his weighted number of combinations is zero. With pocket aces, it's likely but not 100% likely that he would have re-raised us pre-flop. If we say there's a 50% chance that he would have re-raised us pre-flop and a 50% chance that he could have called, then his combination of aces goes from 3 to 1.5. With pocket tens, it's much more likely that he would re-raise pre-flop because his hand is vulnerable to allowing multiple loose players into the pot. Given this, we can say that there's only a 10% chance that he can have pocket tens. By multiplying 0.1 times 3, we can give him 0.3 possible combinations of pocket tens. Of course, this example is contrived, but it's meant to illustrate an important concept. While we can estimate our opponent's hand ranges, we can never be certain of their holdings. We use this combination of probability and understanding the likely holdings of our opponents in order to paint a much cleaner picture and allow us to make better decisions post-flop. Let's walk through an example together which show how weighted hand ranges can be incredibly important in making the right decision. It's folded us on the button and we raise ace-10 of hearts. Our opponent, who's been a loose aggressive player so far, cold calls in the small blind. The big blind folds. The flop comes ace of clubs, ten of diamonds, jack of hearts. Our opponent checks, we bet, and he check raises. We decide to call. The turn is the two of spades. Our opponent bets, we raise, and our opponent now three bets us. What should we do? What can he have? Pause the video here for a moment and consider what you would do in the moment and why you would do it. Okay, we're back. Many players, when they're faced with this situation, would quickly fear that our opponent has a straight or a set. In fact, you'll often hear them say, I put him on king-queen. This is something you should immediately get into the habit of avoiding thinking. Let's talk about why. While there is certainly a possibility that our opponent could have us beat, it's actually relatively unlikely given the type of opponent we're playing against. Let's start by taking a full picture of the combinatoric possibilities of hands that we're ahead of and behind. There are 16 combinations of king-queen, 12 of them offsuit and 4 of them suited. There's one combination of a set of tens, one combination of a set of aces, and three combinations of a set of jacks. There are also six combinations of ace-jack. We can quickly do back of the napkin math and estimate that there are 27 different ways that we are currently behind. If we assume that our opponent can have all of those equally, then we'd need to find more than 27 combinations of hands that he would do this with for value that we are currently beating in order for us to put in one more re-raise on the turn. It looks pretty bad for us at first glance, especially if we assume that he has to have two pair in order to three bet the turn, because there are only six possible combinations of jack-10 and nine combinations of ace-2. That's 27 combinations of hands that are ahead of us and 15 combinations of hands that are behind us. 
When we take a look at the combinations of hands that are two pair or better on the turn and weight them w based on whether or not we think he would have three bet them preflop, however, we come up with a different story. An aggressive opponent is very likely to have three bet us preflop with king queen, pocket aces, pocket tens, pocket jacks, and ace jack. This is a very simple example, but for the sake of discussion, we're going to say that our opponent would have three bet us preflop at least 50% of the time with his premium holdings. Since all of these are strong hands, and we think it's very unlikely that he would have check raised the flop with pocket twos, we can discount the combinations of his hands that are better than ours to 50% of 27, or 13.5. The point of this example is to show how you can do the math, but in the real world, I would also weight the likelihood of him holding ace-king, ace-queen, and weight his turn actions more heavily than I would weight his preflop actions. People tend to be honest the further the hand progresses and more deceptive earlier in the hand. Take this into consideration any time you're attempting to weight an opponent's hand range. As with anything else in poker, you will have incomplete information when you're attempting to weight the probabilities that your opponents will have different types of holdings. The more you learn about your opponents, the more accurate your estimates will be. This is something that takes a lot of practice, but my goal here is to help you avoid thinking about, quote-unquote, putting someone on a hand. If you fold in any hand, you should be thinking, well, their range of hands includes too many value hands for me to call here, and if you call, it should be because their range of hands includes too many bluffs or hands that I beat. Avoid thinking in terms of, I put him on aces, or I put him on king-queen, and you'll be much better off as a poker player. As always, if you have any questions, please post them in the forums. This is Entity for Deuces Cracked, signing off.